Hey, it's Friday, let's do another chin wag. All right, so it's good to be back with you, and uh, thanks for taking the time to watch. And uh, over uh, in this area here, you'll see that the bookshelf's gone. It's because we're trying to set up just a couple things to enhance this uh, podcast, this video cast, a little bit. You know, I got an interesting weekend coming up, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, one of the things that I do as a pastor is weddings. I love doing weddings. One of the other things I do, though, as a pastor is funerals. Now, what's interesting is that for about 13 years as a pastor, a youth pastor, social pastor, now lead pastor, I did one funeral. <laughs> and that's something, I only did one funeral, but I've done many, many weddings. Yeah, to this date, I think I am, I've lost count, but I'm around around 37 weddings that I've officiated before. And I can do them in all different states. Uh, it really is a joy for me to do. If you're getting married, why don't you give me a call? I'd be happy to meet with you. But uh, this weekend, I'm doing a, a funeral. And uh, this 2011 was a very odd year. Um, as I started to get a little well known in the society in our city here, um, people started uh, catching wind of who I am and the ministry that we have at Radiant Fellowship. And uh, the funeral director would oftentimes call me to do the funerals that uh, when the person had no religious affiliation, no church affiliation. You know, what's interesting is that there's a couple ways I could go into this situation. I could either say, all right, an opportunity to get someone to come to our church, or I could go in and say, how can I help? This weekend is one of those cases. I'm going to be helping out a family who lost a 47-year-old son. Now, what's interesting about this story, and the dad is very, uh, um, I don't know, working through a lot of things right now, is that uh, the 47-year-old son, well... Four, four months ago, his brother committed suicide. Two months after that, this brother's girlfriend committed suicide. We don't know the story about this 47-year-old. Can you imagine the trauma this family's going through right now? This dad that's going through right now? Now, what's interesting is that uh, the funeral director said, are you affiliated with the church to this, to this person? And the person said, yes. And uh, the funeral director said, well, let me give the pastor a call and have him come over and officiate this uh, weekend. And uh, the guy said, no way. They wanted me, which is kind of humbling. But what I love to do is go into these situations and not preach at them. I remember one funeral I did for a young dad that passed away. And I said, you know, there's a lot of questions that people are asking right now in this room. And this room was full of people, uh, which is typical of somebody that's young that passes away. And this room was full of people. I said, you know, you can ask ourselves a few different questions. God, why did this happen? What in the world is happening with this? And then I said this because I heard somebody, I heard about five people ask this question. I said from the pulpit in the funeral director room, I said, or a lot of people, you guys are just simply asking, what the hell? I love relating with people on their own level because you know what? When someone dies unexpectedly, a rollover, a, a accident, a car accident, a suicide, a lot of people, even Christians I know, ask that question, what the hell? You know, I think it's important for us as Christians to just be there for them. When I do the funeral for these people that I don't know if they knew Jesus or not, I do not preach at them. I come at it from the story of Lazarus and the verse where Jesus wept. Because in that verse where Jesus wept, it causes us to do three things. It causes us to review our life. It causes us to refocus our life. And it causes us to redo our lives to redo. It causes us to do those three things, and that's the only scripture I use. The rest of the time I'm with the family, I can't tell you how many times I've had to go with the family into the casket showroom and help pick out a casket or an urn. It's really a sensitive time if they're strong Christians and they're strong uh, in their relationship with Jesus. I have no problem preaching and talking to them about the things of Christ, but you know what? When someone dies and there's a lot of grief going on, can we just set the preaching aside for a minute and not even say a word? Just the ministry of being there. I think Henry Nouwen mastered that. The, hen the, the ministry of presence is what is really important. We need to be sensitive to people. We need to be understanding to people. And not every opportunity is a preaching opportunity. Not every opportunity when someone's down 
do we as Christians have to come along and kick them while they're down with uh, saying, you know, I don't know where so-and-so is, but you can be in heaven. hate that. I hate that. Loving people, serving people, that is the key. I would ask that you pray for me that I'd have the right words this weekend uh, for this family that's experienced now three deaths in a matter of months and that uh, you would take opportunities to help people in that same way by just simply offering some kind words, not preaching. Go with the words of St. Augustine. Go out and preach the gospel. Use words if you must. Talk to you later.